At this time, then, I am prepared to pronounce sentence. Mr. Thomas, Mr. Archibald, and the defendant, would you please rise for the pronouncement of sentence? Based on all the relevant circumstances, including the evidence and recommendations presented in court today, it's the judgment of this court. Ms. Vallow, you'll be sentenced as follows. I'll first note I'm going to take up the counts out of order as I want to address the substantive murder sentences first. So on count two, the charge you were convicted of, the, the first degree murder of Tylee Ryan, you are sentenced to the custody of the State Board of Corrections to serve the maximum allowed sentence of fixed determinate term of life imprisonment with no possibility of parole. On count four, the charge of the first degree murder of Joshua Jackson Vallow, you are sentenced to the custody of the State Board of Corrections to serve the maximum allowed sentence, a fixed determinate life imprisonment sentence with no possibility of parole. I'll next address the three conspiracy counts you've been convicted of and note under Idaho Code 181701, the punishment for those crimes is the same as the underlying offenses you combine to commit. One of the offenses you combined to commit was first degree murder, so those may be punishable also by imprisonment for life. When I look at what the appropriate sentences should be for the conspiracy charges, at first I wondered if they should be as long of a term or serious as the substantive murder charges. However, what I've concluded is that these conspiracy convictions merit the same grave punishment for several reasons. First, the conspiracies in which you engaged in have had far reaching impacts on many people besides the deceased victims. And with what the courts heard, I am convinced that the conspiracy charges also merit the same serious sentence. So on count one, the conspiracy to commit first degree murder of Tylee Ryan and grand theft by deception. You're sentenced to the custody of the State Board of Corrections to serve the maximum allowed sentence to fixed determinate term of life imprisonment with no possibility of parole. And count three, the conspiracy to commit first degree murder of Joshua Jackson Vallow and grand theft by deception. You're sentenced to the custody of the State Board of Corrections to serve the maximum allowed sentence, a fixed determinant term of life imprisonment with no possibility of parole. And on count five, the conspiracy to commit the first degree murder of Tamara Tammy Daybell, you're sentenced to the custody of the State Board of Corrections to serve the maximum allowed sentence, a fixed determinate term of life imprisonment with no possibility of parole. Finally, the court will address count seven, which is the charge of grand theft. On that charge, court is going to sentence you to a fixed determinate term of five years of prison followed by an indeterminate term of five years of prison for a total 10-year term of imprisonment on the grand theft. Court will next consider whether sentences should be imposed consecutively or concurrently. I generally don't I'm a pragmatic person and I've struggled with the point of a consecutive sentence when in Idaho a life sentence is just that, a life sentence without parole. And I've thought it through. However, when I looked at this case and the more I thought about it, I've determined that because there are three separate murders with three separate victims that occurred at three separate times, then running counts concurrently would not serve the interests of justice because those crimes all need to be taken into account separately and distinctly and individually. And you need to be held accountable separately for each of the three murders. So on those counts, the court will run consecutively the count two murder of Tylee Ryan, consecutive to count four, the murder of Joshua Jackson Vallow, and count five will run consecutive to count two and four, the conspiracy to commit first degree murder of Tamara Tammy Daybell. So three consecutive life terms of prison. 
The remaining counts will be concurrent to the counts that are consecutive. The court will impose fines as requested by the state in the amount of $25,000 for all counts except the grand theft. On the grand theft, the fine will be in the amount of $1,000. The court will assess the civil penalty that was requested, and I find it's appropriate under Idaho Code 1950-307 of $5,000 per victim on each of the three victims as a civil penalty. And then finally, the restitution, which was requested by the state. Mr. Wood, if you could reiterate that number, 22,000 of what the restitution term is, and I want to inquire if there's, if there's any other restitution being sought by the state. Thank you, Your Honor. I believe I said 22,545. And the state would ask for an additional 30 days to submit any further restitution for the victims, uh, living victims who have been deemed as such by this court. The court will assess that restitution on the grand theft charge of 22,000. $545 as shown through the evidence at trial. And the court will allow 30 days for additional restitution requests, but that will be waived if it's not submitted timely. 